today the topic is what is supply in GST most of the people think it is very small topic easiest topic but there are lot of litigations in the definition of supply in GST why I am saying like that the definition itself covers lot of things today our agenda is to complete the definition of supply that is schedule 1, schedule 2, schedule 3 and what is composite supply and mixed supply this composite supply and uh, maybe the mixed supply this is our agenda first in simply in GST GST in which GST is levied in respect of goods in respect of services only GST levied Okay, friends, with respect of goods and services, only GST is living. Oh, to be known, GST is living when there is a good or service. When levy, when there is supply, then they, in that case, only there is a levy of tax on goods and services supply. So, in supply, uh, covers goods and services. What is good? Good is a movable property. So that it the definition of good includes movable and does not include immovable. So land and building should not be called as goods. Okay. So other definition of goods is that other than money and securities but includes actual claims, growing crops, things attached to farming part of land. So it says that the definition of goods does not include money but and securities. So that's why in income tax is limited on securities, STT is limited on securities but no GST. Okay, things attached to the land means uh, cultivation of crops and they are sold in case there is a layer, these are covered on the goods definition even if there is an exemption the other part they are first they are goods only in respect of services anything other than good money and securities but includes activities relating to use of money or is conversion so it is important point what it says that includes activities relating to use of money and its conversion the definition of good and service does not include money but if the for example if the exchange of foreign currency to Indian currency is made it is an exchange so this, uh, this kind of services are covered in the services they are not the money these are the service provided for example uh, for, uh, uh, a, a person named as A coming to India bring thousand dollars if these are converted in, uh, by the banks in the Indian rupees at the rate of 68 the RBI reference rate with respect is 67 so they are gaining one rupee they are charging as commission so this kind of commission with respect of such commission GST is to be levied so to be dealt in valuation part what is business so generally we know these are business means trade, commerce, manufacturing, provision, vocation, adventure, wager or any similar activity. So this is the general part. All of the people know. But in GST, there is inclusion of commencement and closure in the definition of business. Simply saying that if any goods are sold at the time of commence, if the goods are sold at the time of common closure of business, then there is need to levy GST. So what is good? These are definition of good includes say mobile property. So a goods can be another classification is normal and capital goods. So capital goods means are the goods which are capitalized in the books of accounts and which are intended to be used in courts or furtherance of business with respect of which ITC is claimed 
simply saying uh, these goods are not for sale they are intended to be used for business purpose to produce the output and which value is shown in the asset side of the balance sheet so these kind of goods are capital goods so if the if there is any uh, permanent transfer disposal of business at the time of commencement or closure of any business in that case they need to levy gst with respect of normal and capital goods so admission for consideration so if any admission uh, into any concert uh, with respect of which they need to levy GST also and services to any race club if they are providing services this is all liable to GST and the activities by central government, state government, local authority if the activity is provided by the central government, state government and the local authority they need to levy GST don't worry they are providing the exemption with respect of these activities I will discuss in this in schedule 3 what is schedule 3 we can we get a clarification in uh, supply definition what is consideration consideration means payment made with respect of supply of goods and services or both which is in the form of money or other form other form there is no mandatory money, many or other form only with respect of the supply of goods and services. What is manufacturing? Manufacturing means crossing of raw material or input to an output which have distinct name, character and use. So there you need to change of its name, character and use. Example is uh, in uh, IKEA Mac or manufacturing industries established as an example in Anantapur. Uh, the key manufacturing unit purchases uh, the iron steel and iron for his ma so under uh, is purchasing the wheels so other uh, materials which are engine etc until now they are called as wheel uh, so they are called as several raw materials and their use may be different but now it became a part of car So these have different name, these have different character and different use also. So name, character, different use. So it is a processing. What is supply definition? The important part of GSTI is supply definition. Section seven of CGST Act defines supply. So simply supply definition can be classified into two types consideration no consideration what is so first case may be case one with respect of which supply for consideration in course or furtherance of business so in gst there is need of consideration with respect of supply of goods and services which are to be done in course or furtherance of in course of business for example the person is carrying the trade and the people the respect of his supplier there is need of consideration when there is consideration then only gst is levied okay but there are certain supplies even though they are made in course or furtherance of business without consideration there is levy of gst so what are the supplies this covered in schedule one this is what is schedule one i will explain later so supply without consideration so normal supply there is need of consideration but schedule one cases there is no need of consideration the next one is import of services for consideration if there is an import of services even without consideration also need to levy gst what is covering for example if a is import of certain services from usa levy of for consideration then need to levy gst there is some point is missing can you guess anyone think it's five minutes five seconds time i will give i hope you got the point the point is import of services for consideration they are saying okay but goods of furtherance of business 
this point is not there why this says that if ordinary people is input services from outside they need to levy gst there is no obligation of in course or further in some business there is no mandatory requirement of it but a uh, one thing to be remember is it is import of services why goods are not covering because import of goods are covered by the customs law so this is the major points these are the major faults to be treated as supply of goods or services schedule what is it means this is nothing that there are if the, there is a supply it is to be treated as supply of goods only if there is certain supplies to be treated as supply of services this is nothing but uh, for example in, uh, if in world law when we enter into hotel services such as type of food supply there is a need of supply and there is a supply of goods so there is a levy of vat and there is a levy of service tax but in gst they are saying there is a supply of services only so they are restricting certain service this to be to only that supply so what are that i will they build in schedule to so every act is have an exclusion so in gst also have an exclusion exclusion is schedule 3 and activities specified by central government state government notified so schedule 3 contain this with respect of such and supply of goods and services there is no need even though they are supply but these are not to be treated as supply of goods and services what is 71 covers schedule 1 schedule 1 says what supply without consideration only guys So the schedule one covers supply with even though in the following case if there is no consideration, these are not to be. Uh, uh, these are not to be treated as supply of goods and services. Permanent transfer or disposal of business assets. So, if you make a permanent transfer of businesses with respect of which, uh, with respect of which you claim the ITC, what the provision is saying that uh, it's indirectly covering the business assets, saying that it's covering the business assets. To be cautious, what is business asset? Business asset covers normal goods and capital goods. If with respect of which only you can claim the ITC, if these are sold. then they will need to pay the gst if you sold then there is a need to pay gst with respect of which only you claim the itc even the uh, so in so supply between the so in the supply between the related persons so if there is supply is mean between the related persons one or related partners employee employee office and directors of one another for example a is the officer of b and b is the officer of a is limited in that case members of same family principal agent if a is controlling b then a and b are related if a and b are combinedly controlling the c then a, a and b are related if c is controlling a and b then a and b are related So if a gift is providing, if the employer is providing the gift value fifty thousand, in that case there is no GST. So indirectly saying that provision if the gift value is above fifty thousand, there is need to charge GST. So with respect of which ID inputs, के लिए we can claim ITC, and if the gift is fifty thousand below, then no GST. If the gift value is above, he can claim the ITC. With respect of inputs, but with respect of output, that is gift value, we can charge GST. So if the uh, gift is provided in uh, in the course of uh, uh, a contractual obligation, then there is no GST. If it is a contractual obligation, the employer employee service are not covered on Schedule Three. <coughs> in GST, guys must be remember that in must be supply it is to be covered in definition of supply. If it is not supply, we can't make it. So, even though uh, with respect of uh, Schedule Three, 
even though this is a transfer of goods and services these are not treated as supplied and in this case there is no gst so uh, schedule 3 2 covers to be treated as supply of goods for example friends remember if you transfer if there is a transfer of title of goods it is a transfer of goods if you transfer of right to of goods it is a transfer it is a services so land and building why there is a land and building i already said land and building are not covered and just why they are introducing here not the transfer of land and building here there is making a lease of goods a lease or tenancy of land and building so they are providing the services by giving the land and the building so then in the case it is covered under gst so transfer of mobile property and the permanent transfer this is a joint part to be covered i am explaining the simple example for example a limited providing the car services for you it will if an officer uh, say ram to be utilized for his personal purpose ram is utilizing the limited car for his personal purpose it is a provision of services for example in another case if he limited transfer the this car to be to the ram permanently with the with or without consideration that case is transfer of good in case of works contract it is a services to be remembered it is very cautious why because for example in old recent works contract uh, there is a inclusion of good and services but the gs tax is to be treated as services only supply of goods by body of individuals and uh, association if there is a supply of goods by body of individuals and association for cash and it uh, and it is a of good only this simple thing there is no uh, for the explanation but works contract to be careful is important area mm. guys one thing i forgotten what is if there is no consideration need to charge gst is one thing i left uh, this import of services in court of agents of business no consideration there is in for import of services i said that there is need of consideration but there is certain cases where there is no consideration what is that case in that case there is need of court of agents of business and uh, import of services in court of agents of business and no consideration from other establishment related for example a limited import uh, to certain services from other establishment in usa in court of agents of business where there is no consideration in that case they need to levy gst and what the schedule three covers even though there is a transfer of business even though there are certain uh, terms of uh, business in co in trade commerce of the in course of agents of business these are not to be treated as supply what is those schedule three services even though they these are services not to be treated as supply goods the, what are those employee employee relationships supply by services by court by mp ml what are the services so they are providing into these are not to be treated as um these are not to be treated as supply these are these services are not covering in the definition of supply even though they are made in course of agents of business funeral and burial services why okay actionable claims lottery and sale of land building so i am reading only not explaining i will explain now if a employee employee relationship they not to deal with gst so uh, the honorable court providing services why why need to levy gst and uh, services by mp ml is a funeral burial and uh, the sale of land and buildings so why there is a sale of land and because these are uh, immobile property there is no need to levy gst so mp ml is are providing with representatives of people why this they are in the including this are uh, the not covered in gst and uh, sale of land and building obviously it's immobile property not to levy gst so we are entering into a important area of my lecture this party you get only after you cover the itc level of the linking concept but i am explaining for your purpose just friends remember sale of land and immobile property there is no gst you know that's it but if you obtain a construction building need of gst they are providing whether you can get itc for example e limited providing the construction services to the b limited uh, 
this is a construction of building it is a supply of services if and only for consideration after certificate if we get the certificate service after certificate is completion then it is mandatory to be treated as supply of building but the main condition is uh, consideration to be received after the certificate is generated so it is um, the uh, supply so you limited can get ideas with respect of its inputs and uh, they are charging GST coming to the B limited point of view what B limited think I am uh, applying in the building I am intended to be a course of other and business can I get ITC react says no you cannot get because with respect to ITC provisions of GST saying that uh, which are um, in respect of uh, um, movable capital goods and plant and a missionary only can get ITC so here the definition of building is not covered in the definition of capital goods that is sorry the definition of capital goods goods and uh, plant and machinery the definition of building is not covering in the definition of uh, capital good that's why you cannot get ITC with respect to even though this building is intended in the course of other business you cannot claim ITC so the important beauty of GST lies plant and machinery. So even though if the plant and machinery is a not movable property, we can claim ITC with respect of plant and machinery, but we cannot claim ITC with respect of plant and building. This is built in GST Act. So GST is land and building, input services, anything we cannot claim ITC. Building we cannot claim ITC, but plant and machinery we can claim ITC. In case of goods, normal and capital goods also we can claim ITC. What is plant and machinery? Plant and machinery means it is attached to the land. So if they need other things, if they are intended to be in course of other business, if, if these are movable, then it is covered on capital goods. But if this is not movable, that's why it is covered under um, plant and machinery with respect to which you can claim ITC. So friends, it is important area. Most of the uh, lectures do not cover this part. Okay, uh, yeah, I am covering this aspect. Next one the last topic is compost supply and mixer supply. Most of this aspect is used in determining the rate in uh, problems. What is composite supply? Composite supply means, uh, for example, simply I have not find simple definition. Um, if uh, you purchase a, a, a mobile phone, then this is combination with the uh, charger they are selling so we, you cannot accept that supply without charger because uh, I want to sell what you can do so you do not accepting that supply so it is there is need of natural bundle of that supply one of which main supply is self mobile phone no, no. one of which is main supply is mobile phone so with respect of mobile phone the rate which is applicable to the mobile phone is uh, levied in respect supply that is to be charger and the mobile phone you will be the rate which is applicable to the principal supply there is need of uh, natural bundling here but if you s make an artificial bundle that is mix supply it is then it comes so what is artificial bundle for example they, they are if you aim to selling the products that is notebooks and pens in any bundle there is no need of natural bundling you can sell separately but if they are combining then rate which is uh, the supply which is at highest rate you can be suffered for example if you um, in respect of which uh, uh, if the rate applicable for uh, notebooks is 18 percent and with respect to pens is 28 percent then 28 is levied with respect of all supplies of those goods so uh, with this is uh, they are combining the goods so that which at respect of which highest rate will, will be charged so for respect of books and pens only highest rate attract is 28 to be charged that is the respect rate of pens the need of a single price two or more supplies combination in conjunction with each other so they may be combined with each other and there is a single price with respect of each and the single price there is levy of highest rate of supply which is at highest rate in those uh, supply of goods in this bundle if the fixed supply which attack the highest rate it is to be levied so friends if this is the topic i'm covering uh, the supply definition in my next videos i'm completing the next topics of gst please subscribe to my channel i will most time guarantee so i am saying that i will cover all the topics of gst in my next further videos so follow on so the who are preparing for may 2018
exams my videos are very useful to be covered in uh, less time they can revise maybe i think it's a revision classes and it is also in uh, first class also uh, to the uh, students who do not know gst they can also cover and with respect of both revision also cover this material is prepared by my man which is written marketing if you want any uh, so all the rights reserved to me with respect of this pdf if you want to pdf you can mention in the comments and uh, i will send you mail only no attachment is will be provided so if you want you can mention in the comment section then i will send the mail with respect of your request so if you uh, otherwise if another methods for uh, obtaining material my mail address is provided in the channel you can send a formal mail to me saying that i need a uh, chapter supply of goods material pdf then if you want it then i can uh, for this material okay thank you bye